Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this week for my Game of Thrones bonus video, I promised I'd do something a little more bookish because you guys wanted to jump into theories and prophecies. So this is going to be all about the White Walkers not being evil. You know, the premise being the White Walkers are not just like straight up villains. In order to walk you through this, I'm going to have to talk a lot about theories of what's going to happen in the next two books as well as the show. So none of this is stuff that has already happened. So technically I don't consider it spoilers. But just in case, strong spoiler warning for mega earth shattering theories of ice and fire. And real quick shout out to Jesse Wade, you're the first winner of my weekly book giveaway. You basically get to pick any of George R. R. Martin's books, but I'll be messaging you on your channel for details. Round two of the giveaway starts right now, so all you have to do to participate is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. So I'll announce the winner next week whenever I post my next Game of Thrones bonus video. So my theory about White Walkers not being evil depends a lot on context. If you've only seen the show, it's a lot harder to defend, so that's why it helps to read the books. You know, there's much better context for the characters. And one thing the show hasn't dealt with a lot is the idea of unreliable narration and history being falsified. Even the way White Walkers look on the show has been very, very different from the way they're portrayed in the books. In the books, they have what is described as an otherworldly beauty. On the show, they look more like frozen versions of the Colossal Titan from Attack on Titan. You know, very ugly. So let's start with the idea that things that we've learned about the White Walkers and other magical creatures on the show and in the books is false. For example, during the Princess and the Queen short story, maesters play a big role. And it's implied that they had a grand conspiracy to get rid of the Targaryen dragons, you know, by exacerbating the Targaryen civil war and poisoning the remaining Targaryen dragons that lived on. Maesters are largely responsible for writing down history and giving counsel to rulers. They're also the scientists of Westeros. You know, as such, they hate magic for a lot of the same reasons as Varys. It's something they don't fully understand and cannot control. So it just got a little bit more complicated. You know, you have the White Walkers and the Great Other, and you have the Red God and his followers, but then you have like the maesters in the middle that are just falsifying stuff about all these people. Quick side note too, I think there are way more than three factions, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm just using the maesters as one example of a faction that's falsifying history. So if fire and ice exist in a state of balance, you know, how do you tip that balance? Well, you basically get rid of magic. One way to do that is by getting rid of dragons, just because they have an innate connection to magic. So if most of what the Maesters has written about dragons is false, that means there's a strong chance the history about other magical events and races has been falsified, you know, like White Walkers and Children of the Forest. You know, add to that that most of the written history of the last time we saw the White Walkers during the Long Night wasn't recorded till hundreds of years after it ended. But how do we find out that the Maesters have been falsifying history about, you know, these magical events? Mostly when characters point out contradictions in books inside the show. I know it's funny to read about characters reading. The only characters we've seen so far that have called out historical texts as false are Samwell talking about scrolls in the Night's Watch and Tyrion talking about books written about dragons at the Citadel in King's Landing. So let's roll with the premise that fire and ice are just two diametric opposites. You know, there's just two states that exist in a balance. You know, White Walkers being on one side, dragons and the Red God being on the other. I'm just aligning dragons with the Red God in lieu of fire magic. It hasn't been expressed literally in the books on the show, but a creature born of fire is probably tangentially related to the Red God. So most of the history that we've learned about the White Walkers has actually been passed down orally via like Old Nan, Tormund Giant's Bane, Mance Raider, you know, people in the north. In Old Nan's story, she talks about how the Long Night came, brought the White Walkers, they battled the combined forces of the First Men and the Children of the Force for a long time, then the last hero came with his dragon steel blade, and the war ended. I think the dragon steel is just a reference for Valyrian steel. But then after all that, the wall was built. So we really don't know a lot about the last hero, but I think he's just the personification of Azor High. If he used a Valyrian steel blade, it means he either came from that region of Essos and had dragons, or he knew someone who had those things. It stands to reason that, you know, if you had Valyrian steel, you came from a period in time when the Valyrians had tamed dragons. Currently, we don't really have a date for whenever Valyrians first learned to do that. We only know when the doom happened. The wall, for example, was built over 8,000 years ago, and that only came at the end of the Long Night. So it is really hard to place history, and the Maesters didn't even start recording all that history till hundreds of years after it happened. So you see how the problem gets started with people passing down false accounts of history. But we do have this idea of fire and ice, you know, with Azor Ahai, dragons, Valyrian steel, and White Walkers on the other side. And the interesting thing about Old Nan's tales are that they only speak of the White Walkers closing in around the last hero. She never talks about him killing them all. And how do you end a war without killing the other side? You broker a peace treaty. You know, otherwise, how would there still be White Walkers that have survived to today? There hasn't been any evidence of a black portal to hell or any other dimensional gates or anything crazy like that. So some of them would have had to survive the long night and retreat to the lands of always winter. 
And if the last hero only appeared at the end of the Long Night, you know, what if he was just someone to broker that peace treaty? You know, he wasn't just like a simple warrior or a general. The Children of the Forest had their own war with the First Men, and if they eventually brokered their own peace with them, it's not so hard to believe that a peace treaty could be made with another supernatural force. So jumping forward in time to modern day Westeros, how do you seal a peace treaty between two houses with a marriage? Who do we know in Game of Thrones history that took a White Walker as a bride? The Night's King. He's another mythical figure that we have believed to be evil based on what we've seen so far. But it's not so hard to believe that his history was also falsified. In the books, Bran has talked about Old Nan telling him stories of how the Night's King was basically a Stark of Winterfell who lived after the Wall was built. I know the timeline gets a little fuzzy there. You know, previously it was believed the Night's King was formerly the 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. He was a Stark, you know, not the true heir of Winterfell. But it's not so hard to believe that the Night's King was really just the fulfillment of the terms of the peace treaty between the White Walkers and the forces of men. And here's where we need to talk about the Wall, because it's just a huge point of interest in the end of the Long Night, as well as on the show right now. There are a couple theories about how it got built, but one says that it happened slowly over the centuries using a combination of large-scale manpower and magic. But what about this theory? The White Walkers built the Wall using their ice magic, and they built it to seal off men from their lands. It's not so hard to believe that over time people could have forgotten what the true purpose of the wall is. People in the south in the last couple centuries have started to think of it as more of a thing to keep the wildlings out of the south as opposed to, you know, keep them away from the White Walkers. So the idea is that over time myths about the creation of the wall and the Night's King could have been twisted. There's also a lot of stories about Starks periodically interbreeding with people in the north so there is precedent for Stark intermarrying with someone else, you know, like a White Walker bride. I know we haven't seen any female White Walkers yet, but that doesn't mean that none have existed. I mean, historically, the Night's Queen did exist. Like, she was a figure. We just don't know a lot about her. So real quick heads up, because the rest of my theory involves characters on the show right now and future events, I'm going to say spoiler warning one more time. Everybody ready? Okay. So the interesting thing about this is that it would imply that the Starks have White Walker DNA floating in their veins. They are the human personification of winter. Winter brings ice. White Walkers are based on ice magic. That means that in whatever final battle happens in the next two books, the Starks or the surviving Starks, you know, Jon Snow, for example, would align themselves with the White Walkers. Crazy, I know. I have also seen theories about the Three-Eyed Raven or Brendan Rivers, however you want to think about him, being a servant of the Great Other. And if Bran Stark is going to replace him, it just means one more Stark aligning himself with the forces of winter. Who's the fire in this scenario, though? The other side. Well, Melisandre, obviously, but also Daenerys and her dragons. They're the personification of fire. You know, House Targaryen's motto is fire and blood. So let's time travel back to present day. Why did the White Walkers wait till just now to start attacking again? It's possible that the only reason they're taking action is because men are not upholding the peace treaty. You have wildlings colonizing in the north, and the beginnings of the White Walker attacks coincide with the re-emergence of dragons, you know, fire and ice. It's like the cosmic balance has to be maintained. So as fire comes back, so does ice. And so here's where we need to talk about the Azor High prophecy, you know, the prince who was promised. Rhaegar Targaryen was obsessed with the prophecy. What if he understood that balance must be maintained, and that's why he had a child with Lyanna Stark, to bond ice to fire? That's another theory that we won't get more information about until book six is released, but it would mean that Jon Snow is the culmination of the prophecy. Like he's the new version of the last hero in the Night's King. I think those two people are actually the same person, although it's possible that they're separate people. And here's something really interesting. If the Starks really are connected to the White Walkers, then it's fun to think about their reemergence being the result of so many Starks being killed. It makes winter is coming sound more like a battle cry than a fearful premonition. But either way, I think that Jon and Daenerys are going to be two sides of this equation, which means they have to exist in opposition, meaning that depending on whose perspective you take, one is the hero and one is the villain. So think about the idea that Daenerys is ultimately going to become the villain of the series. I know it's totally just a theory, but whenever you look for evidence in Rhaegar's prophecies, like the bit about the blue flower growing in the Wall of Ice, you start to see how Jon could really be the prince who was promised. So, once all this sinks in, let me know what all your White Walker theories are in the comments below. Do you think they're really evil, or are they just another opposing force to balance out, you know, dragons, the Red God, and Daenerys? So my next bonus video is going to post next week on Sunday. Be sure to subscribe to get it. Because I'm a little bit behind, and because Mondays are Teen Wolf now, I'm not going to do a Q&A for this video. So I'll just try to answer as many questions in the comments below. 
right now click here to learn more about Aegon the Conqueror and click here to get all my season 5 theories. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.